How is it that such a simple question of measuring technology is able to dive into such depths of philosophy, psychology, mysticism, as well as just brute force engineering? In the last video I made about measuring the technology of the Imperium, we used the solo residual to examine their reliance on technology for means of production or industry, as well as using the Kardashev scale to measure their energy output or energy usage. Both of which didn't paint a very good picture of the tech level of the Imperium of Man, and in both of those cases, the Imperium comes out even lower than the Blue Cow people. Not great, but to be fair, they by definition are a smaller, weaker race that relies more heavily on technology. Don't get me wrong, humanity does still rely on technology, but they fill as many gaps with man flesh as are physically possible. I wanted to focus on a much more precise measurement of technology today, something that doesn't really measure energy output or manpower, but physically measures technological capabilities. Things that no real amount of brute force or manpower is capable of doing. So for the sake of that argument, we're going to take a look at the Forerunner Tech Ladder, or Forerunner Tech Tiers scale, ho however you want to call it. The Forerunner Tech Tree has eight levels to it, and it was basically made to scale off of the precursors, with the precursors being at the highest tier, which actually is tier zero, and the lowest tier is basically anything before the Industrial Revolution. Anything from cavemen smashing sticks and stones together to, I guess, the non-racist cotton gin. Tier seven is, just as I said, anything before the Industrial Revolution. Tier six is the Industrial Revolution, tier five, Atomic Age, Tier 4 is the Space Age, Tier 3 Space Faring, Tier 2 Interstellar, Tier 1 World Builders, and Tier 0, which is Transcendent, or Transcendent, whatever you want to say. That's basically the precursors. They are so beyond technology that magic isn't even an apt description. I think the real irony of this scale is that the Imperium of Man is basically in so many different tiers at the same time. And this is where we get our first, I don't want to say humanitarian, so let's say egalitarian argument. Do we base the technology off from what the average citizen lives in, the lowest technology that people are living with, or the highest? I know in our geocentric, earth-centric mindset that we usually go off from the most advanced. We don't consider the people on North Sentinel Island who have never really had technology and use them as a basis for how technologically advanced the rest of the planet is. The same goes for roughly any uncontacted tribe. The point is that anytime we measure the technology of a society, we always judge it off from the top 1%, or the best technology that they had. We don't factor in what the average Joe is using. If we were, then the Imperium would essentially be on the level of a LAS gun. Which, you know, while advanced, way more advanced than anything we're using, is nothing compared to the larger scale of 40k, or even most sci-fi weapons. Since there are such huge disparities within the Imperium, I wanted to take a look at probably the most well put together segmentum or sector, and go from them. That being the Ultima segmentum, or Ultramar, or the backyard of the Blueberry Boys, however you want to say it. I could comfortably say that Ultramar is going to be somewhere between Tier 2 and Tier 1. They may not be the most technologically advanced, but they are definitely one of the most proven, quote-unquote, or most efficient, most reliable, or maybe the gold standard is the right term. For reference, Ultramar, or the Segmentum Ultima, whatever you want to call it, has more Space Marine chapters based out of it than any other Segmentum. Granted, that is because Ultima Segmentum is the biggest, but you know, that's, that's irrelevant for this argument. Just for the sake of this argument, we want to consider Ultima Segmentum as the main sector or main area that we're going to focus on. We're not going to really be focusing on the Inquisition yet, we're going to be focusing on them later in the video. This is just going to be your average Imperial Citizen, your average Guardsman, average Solar Auxilia, PDF, uh, so on and so forth. Another part of the reasons why I really wanted to discuss this sector is that because of its vast size, they are fighting probably the most diverse number of combatants at any given time. 
They've got the Tau, essentially the entirety of the Tau Empire is within Ultima Segmentum, or essentially bordering it. Not to mention, two different Hive Fleets are punching through there at any given time, as well as the Sautek Dynasty and the Ghoul Stars, which contain god knows whatever hell spawn. Within the realm of Ultramar, we get a lot of really, really good examples of the technological limits, or I guess the cap of their technology, with major forge worlds like Metallica or the Empire capital of Macrag, which at some point was the capital of Imperium Secundus for the three or four hours that that existed. Add to that Ball, Nuceria, Catachan, Chemos, Dreadhaven, Eye of Damocles, also Prometheus, shout out to my boy Vulcan, I love you, Prospero, Magnus did everything wrong, Pethos, Ryza, Sotha, the entirety of the Tau Empire in the north, and Valhalla. There's also about a dozen other Space Marine chapter homeworlds here, but again, it's such a large area that it's not surprising. Aside from all of the really, really high quality ceramite plate, vehicles needed, ships needed for all these Space Marines to equip them and resupply them as needed, there are multiple Forge worlds who are pumping out some of the best high quality alloys within all of the Imperium. Add to that that the Dominator class cruiser is essentially only made within the shipyards around Cardiniash, which is essentially the Segmentum Fortress of Segmentum Ultima. I think we can comfortably put the entirety of Segmentum Ultimar, not the average Joe, but, you know, the higher, like, 30% of society, they are going to be more than capable of ordering around construction projects that are going to essentially collapse down entire asteroids fields, or multiple protoplanets are going to be smashed together, they may not be able to engineer entire solar systems, but they are 100% going to be able to terraform a planet into whatever it needs to be. Now, the real fun stuff starts to come out when we look at what the Inquisition and the other, like, top 1% of the Imperium is truly capable of. When the Mechanicus really wants to put their backbone behind something, they are more than capable of transporting entire planets. Let me bring your attention to Exhibit A, Ulanor, or as you might know it, Armageddon. In an attempt to calm down the orcs after wiping out arguably the single largest WA the galaxy has ever seen, the Mechanicus, or Mechanicum, whatever, whatever they were at that time, they essentially took Ulanor, teleported it across the galaxy, and hoped and prayed that that would work, and uh, guess what, it didn't. This alone has to put them at a tier 1, because that is stellar engineering. The ability to take essentially a planet or a protoplanet and just throw it somewhere else across the galaxy is by definition stellar engineering. It might not be exactly as, you know, Freeman Dyson or Frank Herbert or anyone like that might have envisioned it, but it is still stellar engineering. It may not be pretty, but at the end of the day, it gets the job done. So back to the top 1% of the Imperium. I think it's a really good time to define what Transcendent is, or what a Tier 0 really is. Now, before I get into the dictionary definition, I want to give my personal definition of Transcendent or Transcendent, and then we'll go with the dictionary definition and see which you believe is most accurate. To me, Transcendence or Transcendence is the ability to enter and exit realities or universes at will. So, I think the precursors being the textbook for that, or the poster child for the tier 0, is accurate. I think the best example is their FTL, since they literally just hop out of this reality, go to a different one, and then pop back into this reality when it's convenient. By this definition, I'm not entirely sure if the Imperium would be a type 0, since they're not exactly leaving this reality, they're just leaving this dimension, and they're going to another well-known dimension. It's not like they are going to an alternate reality, they are just going to another dimension that's stapled on top of ours, not separate from ours. I know that definition of the warp isn't going to make people happy, but that's really the closest definition I can give. Warp travel really is just any other type of FTL, except instead of going into, you know, slip space or hyperspace or whatever it's going to be, you're just going through hell. So, to me, they are gonna be comfortable tier 1, but not tier 0 by any means. If we go by the dictionary definition, which is essentially anything surpassing the ordinary, beyond or above the range of normal, or anything outside of the basic human existence. 
or human experience, you could say. And while transcendience is lacking an official dictionary definition, we only have the forerunner definition of it, which is essentially any kind of sentience that they didn't deem normal. We were deemed normal, the prophets were deemed normal, the Lekgolos and a couple of others were deemed normal, so... I mean, it, it's pretty common, or at least pretty in line with what a lot of humans would consider normal. All of these definitions, while vague, would either give the Imperium a tier 1 or a tier 0. Now, though, is where I have to pose a thought experiment about the tech. And I don't want to deep dive since, again, this is all speculation, I just want to pose the thought experiment. If the average person in the 40k universe has either some degree of psychic awareness or psychic ability, is something like jumping between dimensions really weird? If that is your only means of travel, that would be normal. That wouldn't be anything abnormal. To the other races in the universe, that is normal. Not like the precursors who didn't use slip space. Everyone in 40k, except maybe the Eldar, use the warp. That's just, I don't know, I really don't want to touch on that. That's if you decide that they are normal, then they're a type 1. If you decide that warp travel or using psychic powers brings you to a type 0, go for it. I'm not going to stop you. I want to end the segment off by saying that the Imperium is very, very comfortably in tier 1. They might barely be scratching the surface to tier 0. Again, that's up to you. I don't want to argue about that. But it has to be said that psychers or psychic power isn't normal to most of Halo, and by that definition, the Imperium would be Type 0. Now, before I close this out, I want to pose a couple more thought experiments, I want to dive into the deeper psychology of it, and kind of go over why replacing technology with manpower makes a little bit of sense. So, in our modern day landscape, we see in conflict that a lot of the times where there is a lack of technology, they make up for it in fanaticism or zeal. They will throw bodies at the problem as opposed to developing new technology and implementing that. I think a good example of this is the ICOG from the Zeely sequence books. The ICOG is essentially a multi-galaxy species that, while having some technology that basically would make the Imperium drool over, still use child suicide bombers because that's cheaper, that's easier. They fill in the gaps of technology with fanaticism. Fanaticism does work, but it's not pretty. That brings up the question of morality and all that, but when you are basically at war with everyone, everything that doesn't look human, it makes sense to fill the gap with zeal. The Tau, for example, aren't on some galaxy-spanning crusade, or at least at the tail end of it. They aren't so fanatic in their ways that they can fill any and all gaps with manpower. They don't have people trying to become martyrs every single day. They don't have people worshipping the combat, the sacrifice. They just have people who are trying to live and try and find value in life. Even within these less fanatic militaries, we still have massive gaps in technology between say, the average lineman and the equivalent of the Didac. Hell, even the Prometheans to the average Forerunner lineman is a pretty insane gap. There will always be gaps within capabilities or funding within militaries, that's just how specialization works. All in all, before I get lost in it, I want to say that the Imperium and the Forerunners are basically neck and neck when it comes to technology, depending on your definition, but by my definition, the Imperium technologically is way less advanced, but their output metrics, you know, their industry, it's kind of in line. Imperial ships are bigger. Granted, they use broadsides, and well, who uses broadsides anymore? But again, that's a, mo that's a moot point. It doesn't matter what they're fighting for, it just matters what they're producing, and sadly, they're on the level of the Forerunners. I want to end this entire thing by basically discussing why the entire Imperium is so ass-backwards to begin with. It's a really common misconception that there is someone who goes back in history with some advanced invention, and then he goes back to his time, and they are advanced hundreds of years or even millennia. This is just not at all the truth. We know for certain that technology and industry are two sides of the same coin. 
you can't get high quality alloys refined without the infrastructure to mine the ore, shipping it to the refinery plant, refining it, and then, and only then, after a dozen or so smaller steps that I didn't mention, does the alloy go to the forge to be cast, or shaped, or whatever it is this time. By removing the industry side of the coin, we are essentially forced to use brute force, or I guess in the terms of the Imperium, manpower to fill every gap. The machinery that the Imperium uses to fund these forever wars wasn't designed to operate on such a primitive level of technology, and the technology as well as the industry is simply lost to humanity. They don't even know the extent of the loss of the industry since the Imperium will just, again, fill any gap with flesh and bone. Technology and industry have to advance in lockstep, Otherwise, we get a situation where nothing can safely be reverse engineered, because the industry needed to produce the parts that we don't know we need isn't there. It's part of this old saying that you don't know what you don't know until you know. And this is just such a beautiful summation of the current technological state of the Imperium. The best example I can give is that of the child and paint. Now, put yourself in the shoes of a young child who has never before seen color, and they are then given the three primary colors in the form of oil paints. Immediately, the kid's horizon is just expanded exponentially, whereas before there was nothing, now there is beautiful color. There's essentially infinitely more detail to reality than what was there before. Before this, the kid didn't know what colors were, so he couldn't understand what they were and he couldn't understand what he was missing. Now, over time, this child is going to play with the colors, they're going to eventually mix it, and they're going to realize that by combining two things, they can get something that is more than the sum of the parts. Through this process, the child actually comes to understand technology and understand the world around them. They understand that, okay, this house isn't made out of house material. It's made out of multiple things that come together to form a bigger picture, a more complete picture. The Imperium, however, does not have time to mix these paints, and better yet, they are killed if ever even caught discussing a thing. Imperium knows other colors exist, but they refuse to spend the time or resources to mix paint, because to the Imperium, any and all colors that they could create already exist somewhere, and instead of working up to the invention, they can just produce the tech without needing to understand any of the wider machinations. The Imperium doesn't even realize how much they don't understand. They don't troubleshoot and reverse engineer, so they don't even have a grasp of what they need to progress, because progress for them is a waste of time. Because, as they say in the 41st millennium, there is only war. I said, whoever threw that paper, your mom's a hoe.